right now. Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. Well, good morning to you, everyone. It is 607 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Brian Wilson is here. Brian Neiman's on paternity leave. And by the way, has a brand new son named Charlie. Congratulations to the Neiman family. In his absence, we are joined by... Chris Moody of Yahoo News, been out on the campaign trail, been following Paul Ryan around. We're going to tap into your knowledge about what's going on actually on the ground with the Romney campaign in just a bit. We want to start this hour by talking about QE3. First of all, you know, do you know what mixed emotions are, Chris? Tell me, what do you think? Chris, I think that mixed emotions, here's an example of mixed emotions. It's like seeing your mother-in-law go over a cliff in your brand new car. I mean, that's mixed emotions. And and, and I have mixed emotions about QE3. Uh, you know, on one hand, my stocks went through the roof yesterday, and I was very happy to look at my portfolio. Same story for many Americans around the country who saw their stocks go up. Dow went up 200 points. But on the other side of the equation is the dollar dropped like a rock. Mm -hmm. We thought it'd be a good day to have our good friend Dr. Peter Morisi from the University of Maryland, a well-known economist, all-round good guy, on the show to help us understand it. Dr. Morisi, how are you this morning? Oh, it's great to be called an all-around good guy. I don't get that where I live. Yeah, well, you know, anybody who's been in your class knows it's not true, but uh, we'll we'll still call you an all-around good guy. It's the university, you know. (laughs) He runs around saying, what are we ever going to do with Peter, you know? (laughs) When is he going to learn to be liberal? Well, let's talk about uh, QE3. Ben Bernanke yesterday pulled the trigger on the first level or round of QE3. Tell us what they did and tell us what it means, and then tell us if it's a good or bad idea. Essentially, the Fed, in addition to the things that it's doing, which is a long list, committed itself to buying $45 billion a month in mortgage-backed securities. When folks take out mortgages and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac buy them from the banks, they bundle those mortgages into bonds and sell them to investors. The Fed is going to go into the bond market and buy some of those mortgage-backed bonds, $45 billion a month, in an effort to lower mortgage rates further. I don't think that this is going to have a large effect because it is already doing a great number of things. And conditions in Europe brought a lot of money into the and are bringing a lot of money into the U.S. bond market that lowers long rates already. That's why you see mortgage rates so low, and we do see some housing market recovery. This is sort of like you know pouring more water you know into a swimming pool that's already full. Now, if it overflows, think of it as inflation. We could start to get some inflation out of this situation, and that would not be very good. All right, the dollar dropped, right? And that's not a good thing. Actually, I disagree with you there. Okay, well, tell me. The dollar is overvalued. And that is one of the reasons the economy grows so slowly. And this is a very poor way to lower the value of the dollar. It's like, it's like using a shotgun, you know, when you, when you need to focus on a specific problem, namely China and its undervalued currency and a few other Asian currencies. But instead, this is scattershot. It hits everybody, friends of ours as well as the Chinese. And so it, it's not a great idea. Uh, and so my feeling is the dollar is overvalued with regard to the yuan. yuan and that needs to be corrected. And the other thing we need to do that this doesn't touch at all is drill for more oil. Those are the two biggest short-term problems we have. Longer term, all this bank regulation that doesn't get any get us anything but small banks wanting to sell out to big banks and not wanting to loan money. All right, I'm still not clear. Uh, total in toto, is QE3 a good idea or a bad idea for it, the long-term health of the economy? It's a bad idea because it's a tourniquet. And, you know, it doesn't address what's fundamentally broken, and it's not going to fix our growth problem. Now, politically speaking here, uh, is this something we see Fed chairmen do every four years when there's an election coming up? Is there a political motive here, or or do you think it's a purely uh, independent uh, policy-based decision? Well, historically, the Fed has not liked to move in its September or October meetings because of the election. It's tried to avoid that. So why are they doing it right now? For political reasons. I think that they were pushed very, very hard. Uh, by Senate Democrats like Chuck Schumer, and and, and he's, he has, in response to that, Bernanke, he's been saying, well, things don't get better, we will move. And so he was in a position, caught between his own words on one side and Schumer and the Democrats on the other, to move. Basically, Mr. Bernanke has changed political parties with this action. This will make it easier for Barack Obama to get reelected, but it is not a responsible action. If it is a responsible action in Mr. Bernanke's mind, he has to ask himself why he's out of step with so many American economists, the majority of whom are 
Democrats and their inclination. All right. So, you know, in addition to QE3 uh, and, and its impact on the economy, we all know that the, the real problem in America is our growing debt and deficit problem. Congress yesterday, the House of Representatives, passed a stopgap measure to kick the can down the road for another six months. Your thoughts? Well, there's not much else the Republicans in the House can do. There's not going to be any real budget cutting or negotiating with this president until he's reelected, or we have a new president. And I think everybody acknowledges that if Barack Obama is reelected, you know, there's likely to be in tax increases to, uh, you know, to deal with this issue. But I don't know that the House didn't, had any other choice, because if it didn't pass a budget resolution and we started to have a shutdown, the Obama folks could blame the Republicans as obstructionists. They'd get a lot of help from the media in doing that. The media is conspiring very hard right now to reelect Barack Obama. One only has to read the editorial, pa- you know, the, 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 the daily newspaper in a lot of places. Uh, and so that, I don't think they had much choice. Jobless claims? Jobless claims are up because the economy continues to falter. This economy is not doing well. It wasn't great last year, and this year, you know, it's growing at less than 2%. And don't believe all this hype about the iPod, I mean the iPhone. The iPhone is going to sell a lot of phones. But the question is, how many more phones is it going to sell this Christmas as compared to last Christmas? Not how many is it going to sell, and how many of the additional phones will be cannibalized out of Samsung? Remember, if iPhones go up and Samsungs go down, you know, there isn't the kind of net gain that we think. I think there's, a lot, there's too much hype here. The economy is in sorry shape, and these jobless claims indicate it. Now, given the fact that the economy is in such a sorry, sorry shape and the jobs claims are, are, the job reports are pretty bad, wouldn't it make sense to have some kind of, of stimulus in the, in the way that Bernanke is doing it now? Or do the long-term negatives outweigh the short-term positives here? Well, there are three things you can do to stimulate the economy. One is have a big deficit. We've got about as big a deficit as, as we can afford long-term. Uh, the other is to have rock bottom interest rates. We already have those. I don't know how you push short rates b- lower than you know a tenth of a percent. You can't push them to zero, and mortgage rates are at record low levels, so low that we may be creating a problem down the road. Uh, and finally, there's the issue of the exchange rate. This is a very poor weapon to deal with exchange rates. Real problem here is not in Bernanke's office or within his purview. It's within Geithner's purview. He is not acting. This administration is not acting to deal with China on exchange rates. And this administration is not dealing with the energy issues we have in the United States effectively. Instead, they're engaged in crony capitalism. If you need to, if you need to create more energy in America to right. solve your trade deficit, giving money to your Democratic pals is not the answer. That's the kind of cronyism that made Latin America what it is, very poor and run down. You know what? I'm having an out-of-body experience at the moment, uh, Professor Marisi. I'm hearing your voice in my headphones. I know you're on the phone, and yet I see you on my TV screen at this very moment. It's just weird. Well, that's the Kia Sarah commercial. <laughs> that's right. And I bet you WMAL doesn't have any Kia Sarah copiers, and I encourage you to go out there and get them. <laughs> All right. Well, I opened the door. I gave you that one. Peter Marisi, good to have you on the program. Thanks a lot. You're all the best to